Lost Legacy The Starship. This is a small game that I picked up at Django in 2014. It is published by AG. It comes in this little baggie here which has all that you need to play. It has a rule book, cards that are used as player aids and then a deck of 16 cards. The game has strong resemblances with a love letter as I'm sure that immediately crossed your mind as soon as I described the components of the game and also mechanically the game is very similar. The theme is completely different. This is a game, an epic game of exploration in a fantasy slash sci-fi world and the players are trying to take control of the lost legacy that is the starship that you see here, the player that manages to control this card at the end of the game or uh, to find this card at the end of the game is the winner. The game lasts about five minutes so when I'm talking about the game probably um, I should refer to as the round. Most players are going to play a couple of games into a quote-unquote campaign game or you can see every single game as a round and then you simply play until uh, one of the players has won a certain number of rounds. Mechanically the game is incredibly similar to <clears throat> to love letter with some small twists. At the beginning of the game you, tur you, you, you shuffle the 16 cards together then you draw one face down and you place it still face down on the table by the deck. You rotate it by 90 degrees so that you're sure that you do not um, make a mistake you know which is the deck <clears throat> which is that of the card because of the card starts a group of cards which is called the ruins. The initial card and cards that will be placed by it or uh, together with it are called the ruins. After you have started the ruins you deal a card from the deck to each player. When it is your turn you draw one card so you have a hand of two you play one of your cards in front of you you resolve the effect of the card and then well that's it. The, then the game proceeds to the next player who does the same. Draws plays, resolves the effects. The game continues until all cards in the deck have been assigned to players, until the deck that you're drawing from is exhausted. At that point you start a phase which is called the investigation phase. Ha! Ah, this is the fun part. As you can see cards have a number there in the top left corner, at least most of them, three of them don't, most cards have a number that is called the, the speed, um, we can just call it the order. This represents the order in which players play during the investigation phase once the deck is exhausted. Starting from the lowest numbers and going up, players get a chance of trying to figure out what the lost legacy is. You don't just say, oh I have the number one so I go first. Uh, or have the number two, have the number three, etc, etc. Somebody asks, uh, are there any ones in play? And if somebody has the one, then the player reveals it. And at that point, the player gets a chance to say, I think that the lost legacy is in the end of... Uh, and in the case, the player that may have it. Or maybe the player that now is investigated believes that the lost legacy is in the ruins, which may have several cards, not just the initial card, there may be other cards put in there by game effects. And then uh, the player may say, okay, I think it's that one. If there are several cards in the ruins, uh, when you're investigating, you still have to indicate which one, and you get to flip only one face up. You don't get to look at all of the ruins. If the... <clears throat> Uh, first card, the number one, is not in play, uh, it may have been played earlier, it may be in the ruins so nobody has it, or if the player with that card fails to investigate, doesn't find the lost legacy, then player, then you ask anybody has a two, anybody has a three, and you continue like this, in order indicated, in the order indicated by the numbers here, players get a chance to find the lost legacy. If you identify the location of the lost legacy, you win the game. It may be that the lost legacy is in your hand. The lost legacy has a value of 5. In this case, well, if ni none of these cards 
or none of these cards are in play or the players that have them do not find the Lost Legacy when somebody asks any five you reveal yes I have the five and I found it I know where it is it's in my hand and in that case you can win the game if you have the Lost Legacy now you may be wondering well then if at the end of the game during the investigation phase I have six seven or eight in my hand I can't even investigate it's impossible because the player with the Lost Legacy will uh, identify himself before I can I get the chance to investigate not necessarily remember the lost legacy may be in the ruins in which case no one has it uh, in which case uh, if earlier players players investigating earlier don't find uh, the lost legacy then players with high numbers also have a chance of finding it and I did see a game where there was a player with a an 8 card that did find the Lost Legacy. Also because keep in mind that as the game progresses and these players uh, miss uh, their target, they do not identify the Lost Legacy, there are less possible locations in which the Lost Legacy can be, so that means that later players, if they ever get a chance to investigate, have better chances of finding the Lost Legacy. These are the mechanics, and but much like in Love Letter, uh, the mechanics uh, in general tell you very little. You can teach the game in under five minutes, but then to really get a sense of the game, to really learn the game, you have to play it because you have to become familiar with the powers of the cards. That is what tells you how the cards interacts, interact, uh, the ideal order in which cards should be played, also what cards uh, mean. The point is that you have to deduce where the Lost Legacy may be. It may be in the Ruined Soul game, or it may be in somebody's hands, and it may still move around the table and change hands. By studying the way in which cards interact, the behavior of the players you have to try to figure out who may have the lost legacy. It may also be that you simply see the lost legacy and then you lose it and then you because it goes in somebody else's hand it goes in the ruins and then you have to follow it without making it too obvious to the players that you are paying particular attention to one card or to one player rather than to something else. Uh, but as I said the effects really are the key element of the game. I'll read you the effects so that you see uh, what those are but it is really uh, until you play the game for two or three times uh, which will take you 15 minutes stops that you really start seeing the connections and that is really when the game becomes exciting and then also when you really get to admire the, the, the smartness that there is behind the design how there are many levels of depth and there is a lot there are a lot of nuances entirely based on the way in which these powers interact that is to say, this is not just a simple rebranding of Love Letter. I think that there was a lot that went into finding a different ways of implementing the basic system of Love Letter. Back to the powers. Sister of Fate. Her power is great. If this power is in your hand and is looked at by another player, of course there are cards that allow you to look at other player's hand, you are eliminated. So when I said that this card is awesome, the power is awesome, was a little bit ironic. There's one great thing, if you have the Sister of Fate and you survive until the end of the game, nobody looks at this card in your hand, then you're the first player to investigate. Problem is, you're extremely exposed to danger. If you get this card later in the game, that's okay, if you have it earlier, uh, most players will try to get rid of the Sister of Fate. In general, still investigates pretty early. And with the general, when you play the general, you look at the top card of the deck, you may exchange that card with your hand. Not only does this give you a chance of refreshing your hand, but also it allows you to know what the other player, the next player is going to have. Because you're looking at the card on top of the deck, and then you can exchange it with your hand. Whether you put that card back or you exchange it, you still know the card is on top of the deck, that will be received by the other player. If you have the Lost Legacy and uh, you want to give it to another player for whatever reason, that for example is a trick that you can do, or you can, that is one way in which it can be done, but there are many interesting um, things that may come from that card. Shadow Thief. She still investigates pretty early and also she has another player which is look at another player's hand or any card in the ruins. If that card is the Lost Legacy, you win the game. So if early on you know where the Lost Legacy is or you get a good sense, you play this card and you may be able to win the game early before the um, investigation phase starts for the other players. Swordman. 
Look at another player's hand. If the card is an X, the effect is cancelled and that player is eliminated. So if you if you play this card and you look at the hand of somebody who has this card, that player is eliminated. Which is interesting because this card, if it's because it's in your hand and it's looked by another player, you discard the card, you get the hand of the player and that player is eliminated. That is, if you have this card and somebody looks at your hand, boom, that player is eliminated. Also you see that there is an X here, the X is extremely uh, annoying when it comes to the investigation phase because if this is the card that you have in your hand, the X does not participate to the investigation phase. So during the investigation phase, players that were eliminated and players with a sneak attack in their hand do not investigate, they do not get a chance of winning the game. Lost Legacy, no particular um, effects, but cannot be played. Old map, as you can see, higher cards have multiple copies, 2, 3, 3, and 3. The old map, look at the top card of the deck and place it in the ruins, then you may shuffle the ruins. You may, you don't have to, you can put the ruins in a single line um, as they are placed on the table and then shuffle them and arrange them in a single line. If, for example, you know that the, red, the, the, the Lost Legacy is in the ruins and you don't uh, want that the players to know that, you feel that there is a chance that the players have figured that out, at least you can shuffle them, you do know, know where the Lost Legacy is, but also they do not know. If you want to place it there and then you want to retrieve it and you're confident that, that the players will not uh, figure out the location, then you do not shuffle the cards so that you know where the Lost Legacy is. Of course, by placing a card in the ruins and not shuffling them, people start wondering why did he do that? Did he put the Lost Legacy there and he wants to make sure he knows where it is to retrieve it later? Search. Look at any card in the ruins. You may exchange that card with your hand. You pretty much can pick up a card from the ruins and get it back in your hand. As you can see, you start seeing the interactions here. Somebody puts a card in the ruins and I think, mm, I think the guy placed a Legacy there to pick it up later. I'll go and have a look and maybe that player was bluffing or forgot to shuffle or whatever and maybe I found the Lost Legacy, maybe not. Assault. Look at another player's hand, you may exchange that card with your hand. So these are the basic effects, the sneak attack we covered already. As I said, not much that um, you can really see from here. You can start getting a sense of what the interactions are, of what gameplay may be, but gameplay is much more than the sum of the parts, than the sum of the mechanics, and the list of the effects. Gameplay really is about the way in which these effects interact, and it especially in how the way players play and move around the effects um, and the way in which that reveals their psychological choices, the psychological uh, decisions. The fun stuff is, is in seeing how cards interact and in figuring out what that means for the players, what the players that perform certain moves may have in their hands and why are they performing certain moves. Are they stuck with a bad card? Are they bluffing? Are they trying to do the best thing, the most obvious thing? Or completely Byzantine crazy stuff making it look like it's obvious? Or uh, are they lying? There are just a lot of uh, psychological elements and this is really what the game is about. Uh, the bluffing element and the deduction elements are key. Much more important I find that the luck element that of course you have in a game that has to do with cards. We played this game for quite a while and it's addictive because it's so fast, uh, it's so fun, it has interesting challenges, it's a mini brain burner. Mind you, nothing like, like Mage Knight, but there is, I find, more thinking in here than Love Letter. The comparison with Love Letter is inevitable and it's it's obvious and we need to, to make the comparison. Love Letter is a game that was that is great and that has been very successful. No surprise that the designer and the publisher want to replicate that success. Uh, of course, then one has the right to be skeptical and worried, oh, this is just going to be a bad copy. To me, and I'll say it loud and clear, this is a better copy, uh, not exactly a, a copy, a better relative of Love Letter. I like Lost Legacy much better than Love Letter. 
because the ruins and because the investigation phase add an entire different a uh, new level of bluffing and thinking around the core mechanic around the core system that was already excellent in love letter and is even more excellent here I enjoyed Lost Legacy's the Starship a great deal. I was completely hooked and I look forward to playing it more in the future. There are the games in the system. There is also Flying Garden. This one I will review in a future video. For now, um, just I just played the Starship. I haven't played Flying Garden yet and I'm extremely satisfied. Small portable, um, it's not very expensive, the art is beautiful, the game is incredibly solid. Again, don't think it's like, you know, the deepest game in the world, but for a filler that plays in five minutes and have 16 cards and has like three or four rules total, this is pretty amazing. This is a game that achieves a lot with very little, a game that I enjoyed a lot and that I hope you will give it a try because I think you'll enjoy it too. Everybody I played it with enjoyed it a great deal. Everybody I played it with knew Love Letter and nobody thought that this was too close to Love Letter to the point that this just seemed like an imitation. This one may have resemblances with Love Letter, but it is pretty much its own thing and personally I prefer this game to Love Letter.